Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye has recently been released, and with it comes a number of improvements, with most of them being under the hood. There aren't too many visual differences, the most noticeable is a new default desktop background which is now a sunset over a dam or lake. With the operating system upgrade comes the usual bugs and incompatibilities, some of which have caused my previous OLED stats display tutorial that I used for my Raspberry Pi desktop case to no longer work correctly. So in this video I'll take you through the installation and setup process to get the same i c OLED display running on Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. Starting out, we're going to go through the same process to connect the display to the Raspberry Pi. To do this, you'll need a 4-wire female-to-female jumper cable. The colours don't really matter, they're just there to help keep track of which wire goes to which terminal. The OLED display's terminals are labelled on the front, which seems to confuse a lot of people, especially once the display has been installed into the case and the front area of the display is no longer visible. The pin arrangement is most commonly ground, VCC, SCL and SDA, but don't just copy this arrangement, make sure you check your own display as there are versions of this display with the VCC and ground pins switched around. If you connect power to them incorrectly, they'll most likely be damaged and will no longer work, even if you correct the wiring afterwards. Plug a ribbon cable into these pins and make a note of which colour you've got connected to which of the four pins. If you're installing your display into your case before connecting it to your PA, then it's a good idea to write down which colour is connected to which pin so that you don't forget. Next we can plug the other ends of the jumpers into our Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. The Pi's GPIO pinout diagram can be found quite easily online, and is available from the official website. Make sure that your Pi is off and that the power is disconnected before plugging or unplugging jumpers from the GPIO pins. You don't want a shorter connection or plug a lead into the incorrect pin by mistake and not have a chance to check your connection before powering it up. You've got a few options for the ground and VCC jumpers. I usually put the ground jumper onto pin 9, but you can use any pin labelled ground. And I plug the VCC jumper into pin 1, which is a 33 volt power pin. Next we need to connect the communication jumpers SCL and SDA. These just get plugged into the corresponding GPIO pins. Plug SCL into pin 5 and SDA into pin 3. Don't get confused between the GPIO numbers and the pin numbers. Ignore the GPIO numbers on the diagram and just go by the SDL and SCA labels and the corresponding pin numbers. Check all of your connections again and you're then ready to power up your power and get started programming the display. Once you've booted up your Pi, you should be on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. It is possible to do this installation on a headless Pi as well using the same steps. Open up a new terminal window and start by making sure that your Pi software is all up to date by running the following commands. Next we're going to install the Adafruit CircuitPython library using the following commands. Hit yes to any prompt switch come up and yes to reboot at the end. This script should also have enabled ITC communication, which is needed to communicate with the display. You can check that it's enabled and your Pi is able to see the connected display by entering the following command. You should then see a table similar to the one shown, which has a single set of characters in it. This code indicates the ITC address of your display. If it hasn't shown up anything, then either the ITC communication isn't turned on, which can be done through the configuration utility, or your wiring is not correct. If you get a table full of characters, then you've probably made a wiring mistake, as this happens if SDA is shorted to ground. 
Go back and recheck all your connections to your Pi and your display and recheck that you've got ITC communication turned on. Don't proceed with trying to get the script to work if you don't get the correct response in this step. If your Pi isn't able to see that the display is connected, then it won't be able to communicate with it and get anything displayed on it. Next we need to install the CircuitPython libraries specific to the display. Start by entering the following commands. Now we just need to download the actual script. Rather than trying to edit it on the Pi, I've made it available on GitHub in its complete form. So you just need to run the following command to copy it to your Pi. Navigate to the new clone directory and then run the script. Now we've got the display running, but we'd like to run it automatically on startup. Open up crontab by entering the following command. If this is the first time you're opening up crontab, then select 1 as your editor and hit enter. Add the following line to the end of the file to run the script. Don't forget the AND at the end to tell the part to continue booting up and run the script in the background. We'll also need to copy the script and font into the home directory. Save the file when you exit and then try rebooting your part to see if it's working correctly. If it is all working correctly then you should have a working stats display which starts up automatically each time you boot up your part. If you're using an ice tower with your stats display, plug your fan's power connectors into the 5 volts and ground GPIO pins next to the display connectors, just like I've done. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.